Okay, I'm going to be doing today's video outside, and one of the uh, challenges that I come across periodically is finding a quiet place to do my videos, but also a place where I'm not necessarily speaking with an earshot of 10 feet of someone else, or 50 feet, or 100 feet, and my voice does travel in more ways than one. It has that nature. So what I want to say is... You know, a lot of people have been pretty receptive to some of my recent MGTOW videos, what I have been explaining about relationships in today's society, especially in cities like Portland, Oregon. And in this video, I'm going to hone in on something that I've been thinking about a lot the last couple of days. It's something that I've seen throughout my whole life. I'm now 35, by the way. I'm on what I call the non-materialistic path. But I also do a TV and a radio show, but I don't do those things for money. Uh, occasionally, there is help that comes in, and, you know, some people might find this funny. Some women may not respect this, but I have all the needs. I have all my basic, basic needs met on a physical level, but that does not include emotional, necessarily. Although there are some good people out there that, that I do know on the web. On a physical level, though. I have the basic, basic needs met, food, water, shelter, uh, and the basics that I need to put gas in the vehicle. And uh, I have a computer that I've uh, been using for four years. And someone sent me an amazing birthday gift, not only a mattress, but a laptop. And they're coming in the mail. So every now and then, these amazing blessings will come through. But other than that, I'm pretty much on the non-materialistic path and I'm doing alternative media now for the 10th year and I just started doing daily radio again on American Freedom Radio from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock West Coast time. And this is really a time in my life where I need to be focusing on speaking on a regular basis. And the live medium, uh, that particular avenue of online radio is a powerful avenue. And so I'm happy to be putting more attention on it. There's something, though, that people don't really understand about women in today's society. And there's a major separation in consciousness that I see between those that are above 35, those that are above 40, and those that are under. It's very different. In some cases, it's very similar. I mean, you're going to find older ones that want to act like they're 15 and wear clothing like they're 15. And every now and then you're going to find a really young girl before her mind is molested by the world. And she's told what she shouldn't do and where it can't do. But a, a lot of us sometimes see evidence of really brilliant young women before they're broken by both their mothers and their fathers and the workplace and the public educational school system and perhaps some of their first boyfriends and perhaps some of the influences, the, the dark female influences around them. There are so many dark influences around women in today's day and age and they often come through the vessel of other females. And it's the peer pressure circle where that enslavement to certain mass ways of thinking is upheld because there's so much pressure to fit in. Now, I want to, to hone in on why we see a major difference in the consciousness between a younger woman and an older woman. And what I want to say is whether you're male or whether you're female, when you're super intelligent, when you're super strong, and when you can use your beauty to sell things, People tend to neglect their spiritual work. People tend to allow themselves to live certain lies. Once someone gets away with something like stealing, like a child, think about a child that will continue to push the envelope to see how far they can get. Notice how that's in human nature itself. It's in human nature to push the envelope to see how far we can push things. So... We see people doing that in today's society, and I see people seeing how far they can push how much they can sell their beauty, especially in, in places in cities like Portland, or how much money they can make with their brawn, being you know a police officer, or being in security, or being in, in the military. We see the male and female version of this. 
And in other cases, whether it's male or female, you see people using their intellect to manipulate, to brand, to advertise. How can they use their cognitive functions, not for good, but to sell something? And how long can it be profitable for them? So we have all these bots around the world that are working on their computers and they're, they're doing graphic design and they're doing video production work and all of that could be used to help raise awareness as to what's actually taking place on the planet. But instead, they have prostituted their talents for these corporations as they make media and make art and make graphics to sell crap. So I've narrowed this down to brawn, intellect, and beauty. Men and women as a whole, as long as they're able to get away with not becoming a good person, but just use other people based on the gifts that they were actually given by nature, or some would actually say God or the Creator. So there's a lot of people out there that have confused themselves for a god and a goddess. And I've never truly met spiritual people on this planet that refer to themselves as a god or a goddess. And that is a red flag. Whenever you start hearing people say, I'm a goddess. Hey, look at me. No, we're, we're actually in the world of the counterfeit goddess. And I actually wrote a short, short blog about this back in 2012 on a dark and stormy lonely night just outside of downtown Dallas, Texas, minus the stormy part, doesn't really rain there all that often. And I, and I posted on Facebook a picture of a beautiful rose, very detailed, detailed petals, colors, and it's like, you know, women and men are like this rose. They didn't create their own beauty, they were just simply given it by the Creator. And I got more detailed. I'm not going to recite every single word. The theme is, is it was given to us. But people often confuse what was freely given to us as some sort of evidence that they are enlightened. Especially in a world where so many women have confused their physical sexuality and beauty with actual enlightenment or spirituality. Again, check out Portland, Oregon. This is a city where we see much of that, as well as many other cities, including cities like the one that you may be living in. Also, I understand that there are some people who watch this channel that are not living in major cities, that are already living off the grid or in rural America. And so the things that I'm talking about are reminding you of the place that you escaped from. And congratulations for taking your freedom by the horns, moving beyond your addiction to physical pleasures within the urban grid today and have actually accepted the fact that you can live a free life. Now, these things that I'm talking about here, they upset people when they hear them, and that's one of the reasons why most people choose to not support what I'm doing locally. That's why most of the supportive comments, 99%, are from outside of the state of Oregon. Actually, all the supportive things pretty much are in Portland, the state or people in surrounding areas in Oregon, I think there's one woman in Southern Oregon, uh, but she only seems to pipe up whenever there's something she wants to dis disagree with. So that psychology is always showing itself. And it's important that people understand there are many factors why a lot of the and a lot of it's cultural. A lot of the younger women are completely disconnected from truth, from a sense of spirituality, from a sense of empathy. And there are certain things that we have been taught to believe in our day and age about women and about men. And it gets a little sexist. And we, we need to start addressing the sexism in our culture. First of all, it's sexist to assume that women are more intuitive than men in every circumstance. That's actually bullshit. I've never met women talking about 9-11 uh, before it happened, uh, or, or very few even afterwards, and very few today. There's a few on the internet, but I'm actually talking mostly about what's happening in the physical world, although here is something that I will say, and I apologize if I'm getting too deep into specific issues for some of you guys you know, that may have different opinions about certain things, that's okay. You know, I, I'm just speaking with what's coming to mind at the moment. You know, to me, intuition is being aware that we're, you know, in a, not a good situation. The governments aren't really trying to help us. 
and those cell phones are tracking devices, the things taking place are not healthy, there's a lot of men out there that have been discarded by society as more sick male and female managers, prefer the schoolgirl look, I mean we're seeing gross discrimination that isn't even barely being discussed yet in Portland. Perhaps as more transplants move to Portland that aren't completely contaminated to maybe say something positive for a change about transplants, maybe there will be more light brought to this issue as people enter this place they thought was Portlandia, the TV show, and they go, what the fuck? This is not what I was told. So this whole sexism about women being more intuitive is just that. It's sexism. And it's also sexist for women in today's society to get upset when a man expresses his feelings. It's sexist to say that only one sex has a right to actually express one's emotions. When someone doesn't express their emotions, you have an energy blockage. You have problems. You have alcoholism. You have violent crime. And you have other things that I'm not going to talk about in this video. So people, first and foremost, have to deal with sexist theologies about men and women if they actually want to uh, have a clear perspective on what's happening. It isn't until women are no longer able to sell their ideas with their physical beauty or sell themselves in that way, and the same goes for men that may use their brawn to sell something, and that includes sell themselves to women or sell themselves to a job where they like to have a guy look a certain way. It isn't until the physical brawn, intellect, cognitive abilities, that sharpness, that ability to sell something, and beauty until it fades for some that they actually start looking outside of the old ways of doing things and actually seek to become whole because they're, they're getting closer to death and they're starting to understand that the ways that they were doing things is no more. Now they have wrinkles. Now they have greater consciousness, which sometimes comes from more experience. Uh, but ultimately, I'm looking at men and women in a very similar light here. It's when men and women are after their prime and they're no longer able to just sell themselves based on their looks. That's the greatest potential for a massive leap in spiritual evolution. Now that's not to say that there aren't good men and women out there that are on the spiritual path. That are actually seeking to live an honest life. That aren't consumed by materialism. And that also includes what they can get from others. And that's not just money. The male version of that is, is basically, oh, I'm going to use my looks and charisma so a man can use his intellect and his physicality to extract things, influence others, to treat him like a god. So whether it's male or female, the sex doesn't matter. Once someone is no longer able to sell themselves based on their looks alone, that is when they start looking inside because their old ways of manipulating others is no longer working. So it's important that people that are going their own way that are watching these videos understand that there's multiple paths that someone could take. They can end up in resentment and think that this is some real war of the genders or they can look at this is really about the social paths in society versus those that still have some empathy left in them, that are heartfelt. And society has its ways of dividing man and woman based on how we look, and that plays a huge role in whether we're working or not, and whether we're working or not has a huge role to do in whether we have a home or not, including whether or not we have any money to, say, take someone out and be a, quote, provider, which is a prerequisite in the eyes of many women, that a potential father or husband has a jobby job or has something that also includes just straight up drugs. There are some non-materialistic women running around, but they're with the dude who's got the dope. And I don't talk about that a lot, but I see it all the time in Portland. It's actually so disturbing, that's why I don't talk about it a lot. But uh, I'm going to wrap this video up. I just want to make sure that this theme is pretty clear. 
there is a great chance of spiritual evolution when people are after their 30s and after their 40s, after they had all the time in the world to see how much they can sell their physical beauty, their physical brawn, or their intellect to manipulate, influence others, and sell things for physical things or money, drugs or sex. As I said, many men will use their intellect, their, their brawn, and their beauty to manipulate women for sex. So both genders do this. And I, it, it warms my heart to see people in their older age really seeking to understand what they're doing on the planet. What our souls are doing here on the earth. Why this incarnation is happening. And I can see in another friend of mine as he's growing older. And I always felt that he would start asking questions after his late 50s. You know, big questions. Because he's always seemed to be a really capable, intelligent, brilliant person. Who always seemed to shut off the spiritual knowledge. He didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to hear about the solar flares. And now it's like he's looking at the things going on in the world. I can almost feel this intuitively. And he's going, well, what is the purpose behind my life? Why have all these things taking place? And has he ever considered those times when there was divine intervention where somebody made sure he didn't kill himself because he was so wild in his younger years? And that's another thing for people to think about. Those times where their ass was saved by someone or something beyond their own power. Age can bring wisdom. It does not necessarily bring wisdom in all, however. I see a lot of scared. I see a lot of mind controlled. I see a lot of confused older women and men in today's society as well. Age does not necessarily bring wisdom. Some people are determined to stay in their chains until their very last breath. And I think that that is evidence of some greater psychological or spiritual control over them. If they're still in their 60s and they're still in their 70s and they're watching MSNBC or they're voting Democrat or they're voting Republican or they're making apologies for the military-industrial complex. Wow. Just wow. So there are exceptions to the rule. You will find young women. You will find young men that are thinking for themselves and they're going their own way. And you're also going to find older women and older men that are like, wow, no wonder we ended up in the situation that we're in. It's people like that that are totally propping up the control structure. It's the sociopaths of society that are literally making sure that when they carry the king, there's enough of them to make sure that he stays on his high horse. I mean, that's what we've got going on right now with Obama. That's what we had going on with George Bush. And that's what we're going to have going on with the next president. And that's what we've got going on with the mayor of Portland, Oregon, Charlie Hales. That's exactly what we've got going on. You've got people propping him up. You know, like a pimp, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll beat the hoe. He'll take the money. But every now and then, he'll give a little bit of dope and say, there you go. Same thing our governments are doing. Treating us like a hoe. I don't care whether you're 20, 30, 40, or 50, 60, or 70, or 80. You're all hearing the sound of my voice right now if you're watching this YouTube channel. And you have the power to create an individual shift in consciousness in your life. But all these people out there are telling us to focus on the collective shift in consciousness, I believe are leading us astray. Because we can't change what... Jennifer believes down the street, nor should we want to. We can't change what John's doing or who he's voting for, but we can put out information. We can make sure that we're not propping up the king or that archon system, that hierarchy. We can, we can work on our own shift in consciousness and see outside the black or white reality of whether someone is valuable or not valuable based on their intellect, their ability to influence, their looks, or their brawn, their sexuality. 
That's what we're responsible for. We're each responsible for that individual shift in consciousness. Meanwhile, the mainstream New Age literature, and you can find a mainstream New Age bookstore down the street. It's called New Renaissance. It's on Northwest 23rd. And there are some good books in there. Great books. Mixed in with other stuff that's all based in materialism. And it isn't ironic that they have a, a theft detector at the door. How's that for acting like you're all about the law of attraction, but you've got a metal detector? You know, what I'm getting at is expecting the whole world to shift before we shift. I think that's a mistake. We need to be able to shift the higher consciousness, even if the darker aspects of this world say, hey, you're a freak. The things that your consciousness is coming up with, you're a conspiracy theorist, you have, you have no right to be talking about these things. And the ways that people have talked to me in my life, that's shown me where consciousness is. I have completely survived this current experience. Living in a uh, fairly mobile manner. And I've taken the uh, attacks, the insults, and I've also noticed how when I'm making more media and I'm making more videos, those people that come to this YouTube channel and troll and say, get a job and everything else, they're never to be found when I'm doing report after report after report on real things that are happening within the city. I've actually changed my location because I want to complete my thought. And I want to talk more about the younger woman. This is going to be a longer video. Now, I was at the park, and what I did is I attracted some attention to myself. Uh, there were a lot of kids. I was not too far from a place where the kids play. But uh, a couple came over. Uh, they looked like a couple of drug addicts. And uh, this woman had a bunch of makeup on. She looked like a partial zombie. And uh, you know what? I didn't come to the park to have an audience just because I did a video and I'm talking out loud. And oftentimes people are attracted to hear what I'm saying even if they disagree with what I'm saying. It's entertainment for them. But let me return my focus to the younger woman in today's society. So I've been defriended by hundreds of women on Facebook that all of a sudden will come to my channel because they like something I wrote or something that I read a long time ago that dealt with some form of truth that they were able to accept. And then they add me on Facebook and they hear what I'm saying about relationships. They hear what I'm saying about people using each other. They hear what I'm saying about the, the real effects of gentrification. They hear what I'm saying about tribalism. They hear what I'm saying about the racism that I'm seeing in today's society. In many of today's um, white women, and for example, in today's Portland, Oregon, it's a very racist place. So. When I'm talking about these issues, and I'm talking about what I'm talking about, people will come to my channel, come to my YouTube, immediately feel offended because something that I'm saying applies to them. Because if it didn't apply to them, why would they take so much offense? Now, getting away from the tribalist part and getting more to the selling sexual part, because that's really what offends them. And it really offends them when I talk about how a lot of women don't value men in today's society when they have no money and when they fall through the cracks. So there was one person that was sending me a lot of messages. And I'm using this as an example of perhaps 20 examples. And she was sending me messages trying to get my interest in her. And some women, excuse the uh, expression, seem to be so dumb, they don't seem to be able to look at my videos and go, oh, this guy's home free. Some do. It's probably why I don't get that many messages. But some don't. And they think that maybe, you know, I, I, I'm some celebrity that may provide them with some form of status. Maybe they're into conspiracy stuff too. Maybe they like Alex Jones. Maybe they have an old CNI pyramid as a Facebook pic. Maybe they like to act like they care about stuff by posting how Monsanto's the devil. And why can't we all just live naturally when goddamn they know they're not outside the box of materialism and how much money a man has? Look at the boyfriends a lot of these conspiracy women have on Facebook. How many of them even fucking do any shows whatsoever? The proof is in the pudding and who people actually pick in their lives. You don't give me any of that crap, so some women have gotten mad at me. Why? Because pictures of them shaking their ass on Facebook doesn't do anything for me. I don't get interested. I don't show interest. It's all about the dialogue. And a lot of them lose interest, lose interest even if I find them cute. 
because eventually I will share something that they don't want to hear. All right, so I'm getting a little excited. I tend to get excited because I have a burst of energy every time I um, go across the bridge. I won't speculate too far as to why that is. If you're starting to think that it's a heavy geoengineering day, you're right. Today is that day where they're covering the whole sky. The whole sky. I'm not even going to show you. I'm using the webcam to record. And I'm trying to drive. And I'm trying to complete my thought. I hope this video isn't too chaotic for you. I hope it's appreciated by some. Where am I going? I don't even have a home. I'm just going from Wi-Fi hotspot to Wi-Fi hotspot. You think women ever think about inviting me to their house for dinner in Portland? You think anybody ever thinks about inviting me out for coffee? You think anybody ever actually shows concern for whether or not uh, I would have used this experience as an excuse to blow my brains out? To leave this planet? But I have a mission. I have a mission. I'm on a mission. I am on a mission! And I have been assisted by something on this mission. And that will not be denied to me. That is truth. What is the purpose behind my incarnation? Was it my choice to be born of mixed race? Was it my choice? Was it my choice? Was it my choice to be born into Portland, Oregon in 1980 to have 9-11 happen? And then all of a sudden have your dad from a genetic bloodline as a fucking terrorist. Was it my choice for ISIS to use my last name? Was it my choice to live in a world where I would tell people that's what's going on and people still don't get it? People still don't realize that my public safety could be at jeopardy if I don't have powerful angels backing me every second of every way. Did I pick to be in a world where people just don't understand what I'm trying to say? Did I choose that? It's possible that I did. Did I choose to come back homeless in the most gentrified city in America to watch geoengineering the skies above me and have every single person that actually does support my work be only on the internet? Did I choose that? Did I choose that? Traffic is just getting crazy. I need to pull over and finish my thought. This isn't going to work out. You don't just drive through the streets of Portland and have your deepest moment, your deepest epiphany. Well, actually, I do sometimes. It's just that I do it when I'm shouting. The city attracts the vampire. As I drive through these so supposed beautiful streets, I'm really driving past a neighborhood that's occupied by vampires. If you look on the internet and you see who's doing alternative media that's, that's actually giving you truthful stuff, you'll notice very few of them are even in Portland, Oregon. You'll notice very, the, very few in the comments. You know, people, when they do, let me tell you what, when people do contact me in Portland, Oregon, some of them just want me to go to their party or go to their thing or go to their event. It's narcissistic. It's not actually like having friendship and going to parties and, and you know, making food together and going camping together. It's, it's like a competition for who's giving who energy. And energy vampirism is a lot about that. It's about where one's energy is focused. So a lot of women, even if they glare at men that are checking out their bright bumblebee pants that are on tighter than the Speedos, they will turn and glare at that man so they can hurt that man, A, and get a sense of energy empowerment from that, and B, get the energy from having the man staring at their ass. And that's all Portland is to me on a sunny day. It's horrible to be here when even the, the sun comes out. I'll tell you what. I said I'm staying in Oregon. I didn't say I had to stay in Portland. You know, as soon as somebody contacts me who's got a good spot or someone... You know what? I need to find some office space outside of Portland. That's what's got to happen. That's what's got to happen. I've got to get some office space outside of Portland. 
I don't like seeing the younger women here. There's a sense of evil. There's a sense of distrust. There's a sense of fear. There's a sense of evil. There's a sense of greed. There's a sense of vampirism. No woman is better than a man. No man is better than a woman. We are what we are because we're human. The things that we do, the character, not the color of our skin, not the perception that some races are uh, better than others. Some some are good from the line of Cain. Some are some are bad from the line, or or, or vice versa. You know the, these Mormon views. It's about the character. It's not about someone's bloodline. But we are not in a day and age, in today's Portland, where people are basing someone on their character. Yeah, the sun shines bright, but why are they trying to cover it up? To make this world more suitable for vampires that can't handle the light of truth? Is that it? Huh? Or is that just one of dozens of reasons they're doing that? It seems that those that shine the lightest, regardless of how they look, get exiled from society, including women that aren't running around selling their sexuality and playing games with men. There are some women out there. And a lot of them are suffering. And because of the contamination within the food, some women have become very obese when in reality they don't eat that much food. Their obesity is actually triggered by Monsanto. And yet there's some really beautiful people out there that are being poisoned. And this world is hurting them. Women are thrust into this almost violent competition with other women and they don't talk about it. But I see it. They even got mannequins where one mannequin is comparing herself to another mannequin. Okay, I've got to pull over. This has just got to... It's always fun having a deep conversation about topics when, you know, you're driving through town and people are going, what's that guy talking about? Or you're at the park. Uh, like I said, there's a couple people that started listening to what I was saying and they thought that they would actually come sit next to me. I just strip, pick my stuff. Like, no, I, I don't know you guys. Especially when the girl's whole face is just covered with, with makeup and she's got the whole hottie thing going on and her boyfriend looks like he's tweaking. Of course, parasites are going to be attracted to this information. People are going to attack, and then also people are going to be hearing things. But I'm not going to sit there and just, you know, do some presentation at a park. It's going to take away my focus, and I'm going to be responsive to their responses. It doesn't matter what age you're at. What's important is that you understand that the body is temporary. And the beauty, the strength, and the intellect that we have, it was given to us. And all those components, perhaps more that you may want to suggest. But intelligence, cognitive, good looks, physical strength. People use them as long as they can use those things for their own selfish purposes. Sometimes they hurt people. Sometimes their whole life is based on hurting one person after another, after another, after another, be they man or woman. Until they can no longer hurt people anymore with their body or with their sexuality or with their emotions. And they can no longer manipulate people with their cognitive senses. And sometimes there needs to be a breakdown in the cognitive uh, pattern. Uh, especially left brain. For them to be able to go to right brain and tap into uh, the idea of consciousness. Or looking at things or reality outside of the little box that they've been conditioned to look at things in. This is why you see people that are in an older age watching my show. That's why my primary demographic is above 35, above 40. If you're a good-looking woman that watches this channel, you are very, very rare. But 
it is clear that our relationship is, is merely me sharing a video with you, and there isn't really a deeper connection beyond that, which is fine. So it isn't like just because you're a viewer that you're actually a friend or in my life because we're connected on the Internet. There has to be some sort of acknowledgement to the world that I actually live in coming to you from a city of over a million people, the metro area that is, which means about half a million women. That's half a million women that don't see anything in what I'm doing. That is a reflection of consciousness, and still some people are in denial of that. I'm not in denial of that. I merely want the answers as to if I chose to come here then, and if I did pick all this, why? Or if I didn't pick this and I was thrust down into this, and this is some sort of a fallen realm, well then what else do we have to learn from this? So this isn't just about my experiences. This is about all of us kind of coming together on the same page and going, okay, this is a world that's grossly thrust out of balance with something. Um, and this is, a, this is a planet, perhaps, where we learn about things, cause and effect. And I'm repeating myself because I've said all this before in other videos. I'm just really trying to tie this together because a lot of people are coming in hearing about, you know, this disconnect between men and women and they're starting to get involved in the gender wars and people are forgetting there's a reason we're going through this. There's a reason that across the board in all these major cities throughout America that you're seeing this, this divide and you're seeing this growing phenomena of so many young women that have seemingly no awareness whatsoever of what's actually going on. There was a 15-year-old that commented on my uh, Joe Biden video and she said, hey, I'm 15, I cannot understand at all why this stuff is happening. The question is, at that age, she can either be open to videos, truth, knowledge, because she's young enough that her mind hasn't been completely fucked up by the public educational school system. And if she had a decent upbringing, or if she had a childhood where there were already... Uh, I just saw another person on their cell phone. You see, this whole cell phone obsession is killing our society. And I think it's doing a lot to fuck women up in the actual brain. There's something going on with the cell phone. Everywhere I look, everyone is under mind control from the cell phone. And there is no accountability for what's happening in our society. There is no accountability. So if someone's young enough to where she is able to receive the knowledge because culture hasn't completely molested her mind, then that's a good thing. But she's also, this person that commented, about to walk in most likely into the school system if she's not already. The high school system, that is so detrimental to so many young men and women to be forced into that type of a reality. And it really reflects on what a, what a, a you know, shithole of a, of a world and, and nation, country this is, that that type of uh, sweaty, dirty, crowded, aggressive uh, not very educational reality has been for so many people. It's not a sign of high consciousness that parents send their uh, kids to learn how to be prisoners. So she's at that point, but that's, that's up to her to look for those answers. And then again, if she gets lost in the matrix and conditioned to be a prisoner and conditioned to believe false truths and to steer away from genuine truths, then she may not be reachable until she's in her late 30s to 40s. I'm going to conclude here. It doesn't matter that some women uh, are good looking, uh, that are into conspiracy stuff. Some of them are into it so they can still continue to be a victim. Okay, because everyone is responsible right now for the relationships they're in, for the people they support, for the people they bed down in, for the people they work for, for where they put their attention for how they spend their money. So someone could, you know, say they're awake and they're a truther and still date the same creeps. Still basically use their Facebook page and say, hey, I'm a model. I need you to like me. Look at this ass. You never can have it, but I need you to like me. No, no, please. I really need you to like me. Here, here's a new selfie. Here's a new pic. Here's my ass. Check it out. Isn't it hot? Isn't it great? Yeah, you know, and it's like, it's there to keep us men hypnotized on wanting that booty. And that's exactly why they flaunt it. 
Meanwhile, men are accused of being perverts, yet the clothing being worn is there to highlight and draw focus to the vagina area. It's totally insane, and it's all hallmark, hallmarks of a mind-controlled society. So I have said enough. I'm going to go ahead and, and go about my day. I hope uh, this video sheds some light on why you see a major uh, gap between the older and younger female generation. But I did not just focus on females in this video. I gave plenty of examples on how it applies to the world of men as well, didn't I?